What's up everyone, my name is Biku, and I had to do something interesting not too long ago. I had to do some engraving onto a trophy, and I decided, okay, great, this will be a good use of my CNC and uh, Fusion 360. So I set out to start engraving, so I made a sketch, I laid out my plaque that I needed to engrave and I went to add text as you would do in Fusion. So let's just say this is a test. So I added text. So this is what I did. I had this. I, I think I extruded a little bit thicker because I'm engraving onto a plaque meant for a trophy. So it needs to be a very fine engraving. Um, this is not e this is not exactly what I did, but it's it's close enough for this purpose. As you can see, Fusion's text is uh, it's normal text that is converted to an outline around the text, and that's great. If you were three D printing something, or if you were engraving something very large. But what happened was. The text that I had to engrave was so small, it was like two millimeters tall. So from here to here, it was only two millimeters thick or two millimeters um, in length. So it was a very fine engraving and Fusion, it didn't really like it. It's, I tried a lot of different things in CAM with, um, with 2D trace and 2D contour and what else was it engrave as well but it's all it's all designed for very large engraving uh, you can do small engraving but you can only outdo the outline of the text and that just it wasn't i had to match it to something that was already there and it just wasn't going to work how with this so i thought okay i'll just go through the fonts and i'll find a single line text and apparently that's just not something you can do at least in Fusion. And then um, I know someone I know has Coral Draw, and I thought, okay, that's a fairly high end um, 2D CAD program. So I went in there to see if I could get 2D text there. Nope. I spent probably a good two or three days looking to find a way to get 2D text, and it just wasn't happening. And I, I, I could sort of fool Fusion in a couple ways to do what I wanted, kind of. 2D engrave, and you see you can engrave this. Oh, we'll, we'll just do that for now. And it was this tool. And if I press OK, you can see, uh, if I go simulate, Turn on stock, turn off toolpath, shaft. And you can see it will, it does this. Again, the stock isn't right, so anyway. But it follows the contours and it does these, um, it does these uh, flared edges, if you will, to make it look nice and how the text should look if you were actually engraving something large or if you're engraving onto wood. But that didn't work and i tried a couple things i tried to um i tried to adjust the bottom height in fusion that just meant that it took more passes and it did the same thing i tried to do an offset out of fusion so in my cad program i set it higher than it actually was and i tried and it kind of worked but it it wasn't really perfect so what i ended up doing I ended up looking online and it, apparently single line text is something that is not a thing. It's not, uh, it's not common for some reason, even though I, I don't know how people who actually engrave trophies and stuff for a living do it. So I found this program, it's stick font V 1.1. It's from this website here. I'll put the link in the video description and Lo, lo and behold, it just seemed to do what I want. Problem was, and it's not an issue if you can work around it. What I did was I put the text height to, I think I was working with a two millimeter text height. 
added my text. This is a test. And you can see here, it looks pretty much perfect. So what you do is you save as DXF and yeah, I'll just save it. Uh, this is a test. Save as DXF and I thought, great, I'll just sketch, create sketch. Uh, yeah, I'll just do it here. And I thought, great, I'll just add it to Fusion. So if you go insert DXF, that plane, and then, uh, where was it now? Quick access, this is a test. You get, okay, yeah. You can see you get whatever the fuck this is. Obviously, that is not what we wanted, but you can see it's like kind of in the general outline of what we want. And this confused me because it's a DXF, so it shouldn't be an issue. But no, apparently, um, this program can't do what you can do in Fusion anyway. So what I ended up doing was just going to like a large size, call it 60 millimeters, and then save as DXF. Yes. And now you can insert DXF onto this plane. And I can select, it's the, it should be the exact same, but now it's just a lot bigger. And you, but you can see it's nice text and then you can, okay. And then literally all you do, all, all I did, just turn that off. All I did was sketch and then sketch scale, select everything. Um, and then I don't know, I'll choose this points to scale by, and then I scaled it by, what would that be? 0 0.05 to get to three millimeters. Yeah, there you go. So that works. That it works perfectly. And it scales down very nicely. So then all you do, you do that and stop sketch. And then I think to get into, I can't remember if I had to do this or not, but I'm just going to do it anyway. To actually get into cam, you need a solid as far as I know, but turn back on bodies and then turn the sketch on before you go into cam. Okay. So we've got a setup. And then it's as easy as 2D trace, I believe I used. But again, Fusion doesn't really make it easy for you. So let me, what happens if you just, if you go 2D trace and you click on that and then click on that and then click on that and then click on that, it takes it as individual um, segments. It does, it's, it's processed individually. You can see a, uh, it says four different chains, but you can get around that by clicking and then clicking on it again. And then you see, you get this menu that is different to anything else in fusion, but then you can say, uh, no, wait, cancel. Uh, if you go to the trace, click, click again, and then click to the end of the line. And then you, It'll highlight everything but the last segment, that's fine. And then you click plus. And now you can see it'll take this as one chain. So it won't, there's no chance of it doing things out of order. And then you can do that separately. And then like here, you do that separately. And then you can click on that and then there. So you see it'll do that and then it'll do that. You can also change the direction of, by using the arrow. So it'll be better for it to go down and then start like that. But if you wanted to, you can change the arrow and it'll go up like that. And the I is fairly simple, but for the S you might have to zoom in a bit. So though, if you see like that, you can't because the arrow is in the way. So if you zoom in a bit, click, go all the way to the edge and there. So it's, it's a little bit of a workaround, but when you do this and you now click okay, uh, yes, that. 
And if I now go uh, simulate, you will see that it, yeah, no. You can see that it's doing right on the line. It's still doing things kind of out of order, but it doesn't really matter because it is still doing the change that you wanted. Okay, for some reason, I think Fusion have changed some stuff before or since I've done this because when I did this, I seem to remember I could go into the Heights tab and change the bottom height. Anyway, so I can't, um, I might be mistaking things, but I, I think I think you used to be able to do that. Anyway, but if you look at the simulation, you can see that it is coming down and going on the line really nicely. And that way you can get a lot finer engraving than you can with the stupid outline text that is in Fusion. You can get some great engravings as long as it isn't too small. Um, I didn't, I, when I ended up doing this, I didn't end up using a rotary cutter. I used a, it's a Dremel um, impact engraver. So it basically taps the surface. Um, I, I don't know what the rate is, but it taps the surface a lot. It's meant as a hand engraver. We made a, an attachment. So it's, so it goes onto the milling machine and the engravings that we got out of it were really nice. So this. This is just supposed to be a little um, tutorial on how to do this. And then obviously setting up cam and everything in Fusion is the same as normal. All that you would do is set the zero height to the height that is engraving. And yeah, this was a cause of frustration for a, a couple of weeks to trying to get this to work. And maybe there is a better way, but this is a free way that I found works really nicely. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it has helped you in any way. So thanks for watching and goodbye.